Anna is now open. It will remain open until 6.53 p.m. I'm just here. Good evening and welcome to the NCAA Women's Final Four press conference. Joining us on stage are the 2024 national champion South Carolina Gamecocks. We'll hear an opening statement from Coach Staley and then follow up for, with questions from our student athletes. After we have fielded questions from our student athletes, then we will dismiss them to the mix zone and then we'll field questions for Coach. Coach, if you could um, give us, provide us a brief opening statement. Um, just Really uh, want to just say congratulations to, to Iowa and Caitlin for um, making it back to the national championship game. Um, obviously, they are a formidable opponent um, that took everything that we had to, to win the basketball game, but just don't want to um, um, not utilize this opportunity to thank Caitlin for what she's done for women's basketball. Like, her, her shoulders were heavy and getting a lot of eyeballs on our game. And sometimes, as a young person, it could be it could be a bit much. But I thought she handled it with class, um, and I hope that every step of the ladder of success that she goes, um, she's able to elevate whatever room she's in. But I'm super excited and uh, super excited to share this moment with our team. They are incredible um, human beings and young people who trusted, believed, um, figured out a way to help each other learn and grow, and ultimately become champions. At this time, we'll open up for questions from our student athletes. We're going to start with Jake, go to Daniel, Kareem, Cam, and then I'll work my way through. So Jake, if you could raise your hand first. Jake Totter, ESPN. Uh, Raven, uh, Caitlin had the big start, 18 points in the first quarter. You got that defensive assignment primarily after that. Uh, and really cooled her off. What was your mindset going into that matchup? Um, don't let her score. I mean, I, I was ready. I was ready for the moment, and I take defense very hard. Like I take it to heart, and I think I studied her moves, and I was ready. I had confidence this year. I mean, I was telling myself last year is not going to happen again. So, take our next question, Daniel. Okay, we'll move on. Kareem, if you could raise your hand. Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Um, following up on that, Raven, you know, can you can you explain what this means to you after you know you've talked so much about the entire last year um, and the work that you put in? This was where you wanted to be, and now to be here in this moment, kind of, what does that mean to you? It means a lot to do it with these group of girls. I mean, if you guys would have seen us, just the stuff that we went through in the summer and the hard work we put in. I mean, we, we deserve this, honestly. And just our bun, like, Coach, she gives us so much leeway. She let us be loose. She just let us be who we are. So, I mean, it's just so much stuff that we go through. And credit to the Freshies. I gave my uh, net to Aaliyah Boston when, when I was interviewing with her. And I just feel like she – it started with her. She, she gave this, like, leadership role, and she instilled this leadership role last year. And I just I, – there's no better way you can learn from her. So, Our next three questions in order are going to be Cam, Alexa, Jonathan. This is for both Camilla and Tahina, um, Cameron with The Athletic. I, I'm curious, we talked about Ravens defense, both her and Bree kind of gave different looks at Caitlin all game. From you guys' perspective, how much does that help when you are able to have two versatile defenders on her? Uh, and I guess, how, yeah, how does that help you guys as well as the whole team? 
I'm sorry, I was writing something down. If we could start with, uh, <laughs> we'll start with Raven. Oh, the questions for me? I'm sorry, we'll start with Camilla. Um, I think it's really important. I feel like they do a great job on defense and just by seeing how hard they play, it makes us want to play defense harder and yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I thought they had the hardest job tonight, but it was also team defense. Um, it took a lot of effort to, you know, guard Caitlin, and she did her her thing, and we did ours. But just to have these, you know, elite defenders on our team, it makes me want to play defense. It makes me want to play for them um, even harder. And it's just amazing when you have, you know, good defenders like them. And it's not only them, but it's like the whole team. So I'm just really proud of them for what they did tonight. They did they did awesome. They did a great job, and um, yeah. <laughs> we can go to our left, Alexa. Uh, Alexa Philpu, ESPN, for Tahina and Raven, to not just win the championship, but to be able to say you were able to accomplish a perfect season. What does that perfection going down the history books mean to you? Okay, this time we'll start with Raven. Um, it means a lot to um, you know make history, be one of the teams to make history, especially with a young group. Um, you, you guys just don't know like what this team go through, what this team do. I mean, we. It's daycare, yeah, it is daycare. But at the same time, when we step on the court, we ready to play. When a, when the ball goes up, when a, when the ball goes up, we ready to play. We have a winning mentality, and we're so competitive. And our practices are so hard, especially against the highlighters. So I mean, we just we just we have a competitive edge, and we want to win. <laughs> yeah, it just means so much. Um, we've come a long way. It's been a long journey. We've trusted each other so much over the season. We have so much confidence with each other, so much love. Um, it, we're going to sound like a broken record, but it's love throughout this whole program, throughout this whole team. And we just generally love to be with each other. We generally want to see everyone succeed. And it's just been a great journey. And to cap it off like a perfect season, it's just a blessing. Um, and all glory to God for that. Next order of questions will go Jonathan, Trey, Nancy. Jonathan. Jonathan Tannenwald of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Camilla, what is Dawn? mean to you what she is as a coach and a person and what she's been able to do for the program and help you with individually thank you um, she means a lot to me I feel like um, since the first day I got to South Carolina she's been working so hard to get me ready and prepare for moments like this and I'm just so thankful to have her as a coach um, she's like an inspiration for me and a lot of young girls out there and I'm just so thankful to have her as a coach she's the best in the business you already know <laughs> <laughs> We'll take our next question. Trey, if you could raise your hand, we can get the microphone to you on the other side. Trey Modlin, WOVU 95.9 FM. Your team had 48 points in the paint and 51 rebounds, 18 offensive. How were you able to dominate inside so well during the game? Um, I think just getting, trying to get the post ups and my teammates finding me and giving me the ball, even though I didn't show really good tonight. But I think just by um, we would just move up the ball really good, and they was able to find me while I was open. So, yeah. Nancy, Arm Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Camilla, over this other way. Other way. <laughs> um, it's been less than 48 hours since you injured your knee, and I'm just wondering how limit or how how much treatment did you have to get, and what did you have to do? I mean, how did it affect you at all today? It sure, certainly doesn't look like it on the stat sheet. Um, I got a lot of treatment between yesterday and today, but I don't think it, it really affected me today. I was just able to go out there and play. I wanted to play, play for this team, play for our coaches, and I just want to go out there and play yet today. We'll go to our back row. If you could raise your hand. Yep, right there. Thank you, ladies. Kenny Rhoda, WHBC Radio. Every player, every team is motivated by something different. I'm just curious if, for all three of you, how much you were motivated by what happened last year uh, against Iowa, and did you want to see them in the national championship game this year? Oh, OK. <clears throat> I did want to see them in the <laughs> national championship this year because what happened last year, it was apology to my teammates, my coaches, and myself. And I just feel like, like I said, revenge. it was a revenge tour. And it's no better way to play them in the championship and beat them. Tahina, do you have anything to add? No. Camilla? Mm -mm. No. OK. Next question, we'll go to Doug. Doug, if you could raise your hand, we'll get the microphone to you. 
uh, Doug Feinberg, the Associated Press. Raven, and talk a little bit about that last four minutes over here on the far right. I think it was 80 to 75, and then you guys didn't let him score the rest of the way. Talk about that defense last thing, 4 12. And also with so many people coming back, minus Camilla, how good this team could be, not only now, but for the next couple of years. I mean, this team is going to, we're going to be good. I mean, it, Coach Staley, I mean, we have the best coach, what, in the country, in the nation, in the whole wide world. I mean, it's, it's no telling what she's going to add to the pieces that's already here. So I just say, be on the lookout. <laughs> Lindsay, we're going to go to our left, ladies. Excuse me, our right. Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Um, Camilla, it was just a month ago in the SEC championship game that things got ugly and it was just all over the news. And then you have been dominant uh, throughout the NCAA tournament. And I wondered, how did you shift your mindset if you did? And then what was it like to just play so well in the, in the two biggest games of the season over the weekend? Um, it was amazing. I feel like I just wanted to get out there um, in this tournament and just play really well for my teammates, for my coaches, and to win the championship. So I think that's what I did. I'm going to take our next question. Dion, right behind you, Lauren. All right, Dion Cash, Fox Sports. What does this mean for you ladies' legacy, and what is it like playing for the GOAT? We will start with Raven. The GOAT, you mean the Don Staley? <laughs> um, it means a lot just to play, um, just to learn from her. I mean, she's, she's like a mom. I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I go to her about everything. I mean, I could, I could joke around with her. I could, you know, do anything, just anything. She's like a mom, or like a home away from home. It's a home away from home feeling. And there's no better way to have a coach like her and be so comfortable around her. And I just, you know, I take pride into what she do for us on and off the court, not just with basketball. So. Camilla? Yeah, I agree with Ray. I feel like, especially me, I'm international, so I don't have my family here. And she's just like a family for me, a family away from my home. And I'm just so thankful to have her as a coach. Aww. Tahina? <laughs> man, um, she's so important to have in people's lives, man. She's, she's amazing. Um, you know, God has put her in my life, and she's impacted it so much, not only me, but my family. Um, she changes lives for the better. Um, I wish you guys could experience that and just how much she's helped me as a player and as a woman. And she's just amazing, man. It's a blessing. And just playing for her, it's so much fun. And people just love playing for her. And, you know, people want, would run through brick walls for her. And to, to be able to have a coach like that, it's, it's unmatched. And we're all just really blessed to have someone like her in our corner. And um, she just impacted our lives for the better. We're going to go to our left. If you could raise your hand so the student athletes can see you. Robert Fembers, Um, This is for either of you. You know, you look at the stat sheet there. I mean, we have three starters up on the stage, but uh, it's a 37 nothing advantage in bench points <laughs> in national championship game. Can you just kind of break down that kind of impact, what, what your teammates were able to do in that uh, department? We'll start with Tahina, then we'll go to Raven. Man. They're our difference maker this whole season, man. We've, we've depended on them so much. They're our depth, and they've done so much for this team, and a lot of people sleep on them, but they could start on any team in this country. But they decided to sacrifice that and play for this team and win a national championship, which we did today. So big shout out to them. They did their big thing today on such a big stage. I'm really proud of them, and their confidence has grown so, so much throughout the season. And I'm just really proud of them for performing how they did today and helped us get this dub. Yeah, going off what Tahina um, said, I think I'm going to give Tessa Johnson her flowers. I mean, I think when you talk about freshmen, I think her name should come up. It's just the stuff that she does. She's always she always ready for the moments. When her number's called, she's always ready. I mean, I think every shot she put up, it goes in. I mean, just just what Tessa does. And on the defensive end, she take pride on defense. And if you talk to her, she's like a sponge. Like, she gets in the gym. She works on her shot every day. And she wants to learn. And she wants to grow. So when you talk about freshmen, Tessa Johnson's name should definitely be in the conversation. Take our last question from the front, Daniel. Dan Zagrzewski, OutKick. Actually, I just wanted to follow up on that. Tessa Johnson scored a career high in the national championship game. She's a freshman. I don't know how old she is. I assume 18 or 19 years old. Uh, Raven, you just talked about it. So Tahina, Camilla, if you could talk about Tessa's performance. We'll start with Tahina. Man, Tessa was due for a breakout game. And 
what to do better on the national stage. Um, she's trusted her process here. She's trusted her journey. And for her to do that on such a big stage, I'm so proud of her. Her confidence has grown so much, and I'm just really excited for her future. She's going to be a great Gamecock, and she's she got a bright future ahead of her. Um, but she's just got to keep trusting trusting the process and being who she is, and she's just an amazing little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree with Pau. I, I'm just so proud of Tessa. She's been working so hard since the beginning of the season. And I'm just so happy for her because she went out there and she did a big one. And I know this is going to boost her confidence a lot. And she's just doing a great job. And she always worked really hard for moments like this. And I'm just so proud of her. Thank you very much, ladies. We are at time. Again, congratulations on a tremendous season. Thank you. Thank you. They will be available in the mix zone. <clears throat> And now at this time, we'll take questions from Coach. We'll start with Lindsay, Doug, then we'll go Talia. And I'll work my way around the room. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Don, it felt like this championship was more emotional for you than the other two. Um, early in the game, you looked really emotional. And then at the end, you obviously broke down when they presented you with the trophy. Mm -hmm. Was it more emotional? And if so, why? Well, it was emotional for me because of how it ended last year. Um, and I'll, I'll leave that there. Um, and, I, and I was emotional at the beginning of the game because I didn't want what happened last year to happen this year. So I was handling things in real time, not, not afterwards. And I'm, I, I'm going to move to handling things in real time and not having to wait until there's a, an, an ending that shouldn't be. Um, so I, w I, was that, I was like that throughout the entire season. But for, for this one, I'm, I, I wasn't going to allow what I felt happened to us last year to, to happen this year. So I had a little bit of uh, PTSD. and. I addressed it in real time. I mean, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. You you carry um, the burden of you know every single one of your players, all the coaches and staff members that put so much into our team, and you know it's heavy load to be undefeated to you know finish the job, and it, you you get emotional because you just want that for them and you're happy that you're able to, you know, because only one team, one, only one team wins a national championship. And when you win a national championship, it's, it, there's more trust that's built that you could take into the post, into the, into the summer workouts and the postseason workouts and the, and, and the, you know, in the, in the fall and then into another season. Um, there are so many conversations you have with parents, uh, with any significant person in our players' lives that that the rigors of a season, you, you just have to face that music with them. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's challenging, sometimes it's just a really hard conversation. And then once you win, you know, this is the reason why I like, and it builds, it, it builds trust amongst everybody that's involved in our, in our players' lives. And then I'm just super happy for our staff. Like they work really hard. They, 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 they are incredible, you know, basketball. Like I think they're savants. I think they are always looking for ways in which um, to get our players better in a way that they can handle it. Not the way that we see it and we, cause, the way we see it is probably very difficult. The way we would handle it would be difficult for them to actually um, learn and apply and execute in a in a basketball sense. So we're able to just kind of speak their vernacular and them actually deliver. So I mean, all of that makes it emotional for me. We're gonna go to Doug on our our left, Coach. Hey, Coach Doug Farmer, the AP. The trophy's blocking me, which is well deserved trophy up there. Thank you. You said last Sunday when we were in Albany, you were okay with no one really talking about you guys and other stories. You'd wait till this Sunday to talk about it, hopefully with the championship. You got the tenth undefeated team in the history of the game. You're the fifth coach to win three titles or more. You've won two out of the last three. 
what does it mean for this program for you to have done all you guys have accomplished this year with a perfect team in the last couple of years with the dynasty you've built in South Carolina? Well, it, it means that we have quietly have done things, in my opinion, the right way. You know, we find the right pieces to help us. We, we, we really do things the right way. We're very disciplined in how we approach basketball. I am one that I'm forever indebted to basketball, so I'm, I'm always going to take care of it. I'm always going to make sure that our players are respectful. I'm always going to make sure that um, they know the history of our game. Um, I want to make sure they are always respectful to our opponents. And when you do it that way, um, in return, you have success. You have success in the wins column and very little you know, disappointment in, in the loss column. Um, and I don't, I, I don't think that's talked about enough, what we've been able to do, and I don't know why. And I really don't care why. We're going to keep doing what we're doing the right way, you know, whether we are the uh, popular or unpopular um, successful programs in the country. So we're going to keep doing that that way. Coach, we're going to go to our, our right, second row, Talia. Hey, Coach, Talia Goodman with the next. Someone mentioned earlier the depth, the 37 to nothing bench points. Obviously, you hope at the beginning of the season, but what's it like seeing you know the way you built this team, this roster, panning out in the way that you hoped and having the success in that way? I mean, it's, you know, to have a, you know, have a roster that goes 9, 10 deep um, is, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege, it really is. Um, but it has to be developed slowly and the right way. Like there's a lot of trust that has to be built because there's some, there some games that um, some of them won't play a whole lot, especially the people that come, that's coming off the bench. You know, I mean, Chloe Kitts went up and down and you know, all around. Um, and then finally she settled in today to have a really good game. But she had to come off the bench at times um, because of not what she, you know, not what she wasn't doing, but was more about what somebody was doing and doing well, um, and that could shake your confidence. But at the same time, you have to let her know the way you build trust in our coaching staff. It's the same way your, you know, your your competitors building trust. Um, I think Malaysia Fuwali has been very patient with us. To, to be able to have a, you know, a household name um, coming off the bench, playing maybe, you know, probably less than 20 minutes a game uh, where she could have gone anywhere else in the country. And they've given her the ball time and time again. But winning the national championship will allow us and that relationship to continue to grow. Because um, I know she, she really wanted this. And I would imagine that come as early as next year, she's going to want to be a starter. She's going to want to be um, play more minutes. She's going to want a lot of different things because she got the big one. Um, so now she'll maybe want to concentrate on some individual awards. And I appreciate her sacrifice. So it's everybody. It's Sanaya Fagan who, I mean, she's a junior and she's probably started less than 10 times. Um, but she came up crucial this game, like really. And I, I know she's probably wanted to play a lot more throughout the season, um, but I hold her to her standard. I hold her to her her personal and individual standard. To sometimes that that's, that equates to six minutes or five minutes or less, and it doesn't feel good. But in order for us to do what we do today, means she's got to meet her standard. And, and and we don't and, and we don't sacrifice that. So it's built through trusting the process, it's built through like really high level communication. Some that they may not like all the time, but it's it's truth. But we also want we want them to talk to us about what they're feeling and seeing, um, so we can so we can understand them and how they how they operate in that space, so we don't want to miss anything. We don't want to mess anything up, but we also want to give them an opportunity 
that tell us what they're thinking and how they're processing information or if we're giving them the right information. So it's a long-winded answer, sorry. We'll go with Jim. Hey, Coach, uh, Jim Trotter from The Athletic. First off, congratulations. You made a point after the game of recognizing Caitlin Clark for helping to elevate the game. South Carolina was also a part of that too, as well as other clubs. And I wonder if not in this moment, later, if you will look back and take particular pride in saying that you all were part of this transformation that we all are talking about today? Well, I, I know we do our part. I know we do our part. I know we do our part in making sure we try to, we try to as, as much as possible, um, shout it to the top of our lungs what our game is all about and all the storylines and all the talent and all the coaches and, you know, all the, the talent that's, that's actually um, telling the stories. You know, I, 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 I have to continue to shout out um, L. Duncan and Drea Carter and Shanae and now Aaliyah and Carolyn Peck. Like, they have done a tremendous job. Like, we have to find a way for them to tell our stories during the off season because you have to build, you got to continue to build on what we, you know, what we've captured. Um, do I think South Carolina is a part of that? Yeah, we're, we're a part of it. I don't know what part, but you can see the numbers that, that when Caitlin plays in a game, you see the numbers, they're real numbers. And a lot of people like to deal in those real numbers. And I, you know, I, I, I hope we were able to attract some more people by the amount of eyeballs that probably watched our game just because Caitlin was appearing in it. What does it mean to me? I, I just want our game to grow. Just, I don't care if it's us. I don't care if it's Caitlin. I don't care if it's, you know, Juju or Hannah. I just want our game to grow, no matter who it is. Because there, you know, there's a lot of people that are out there growing our game, a lot of programs out there that are growing our game. We need to continue to uplift them as well as we as we take our game to that to that next level. Gonna go to our left, Jake. Don, Jake Trotter from ESPN. How critical was Ravens defense on Caitlin, especially the way Kate, Caitlin came out shooting the ball? Um, I mean, I mean, Raven, I mean, for Raven, I think it was psychologically helpful uh, to be able to, to play Iowa and Caitlin to, to just release, you know, you, you as a player, you, you want to release certain things that have held you captive. And I do think the waving off in the final four last year held her captive to where um, usually you just quietly do things and Go about your business. <laughs> Raven's got the bullhorn saying, this is revenge tour, this is this, this is that. And then for her to actually lock in and 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 play Caitlin the way we needed, we needed her to to play her. Um, we knew she was gonna get her points. We wanted her to get her points in a in an inefficient way. Like I, I look at the stat sheet, it's beautiful. Like if she scores I mean, if she's shooting 50%, we lose the basketball game. So I think it's pretty cool that she was able to just kind of check off a goal and, and move forward. And hopefully there will be another test to challenge her in a way that will continue to elevate her. We'll go to our right with Chris. Don, Chris Easterling, Akron Beacon Journal. As you've been building this program, this, this dynasty, what have you looked for in a player beyond just obviously the basketball skills? Has there been a singular maybe trait that you look for in a player that says, that's what I want as in a South Carolina player? Well, I mean, aside from their talent, um, a, a prerequisite of us recruiting and actually getting a commitment from a young, a young lady is their relationship with their parents. Because if they respect their parents, they're going to respect us. If they don't respect their parents, we don't have a shot. Um, so that's that's what we look at um, a lot. And we have, fortunately, we have some really great parents who are, you know, they're in their, their, their daughter's lives every single day. 
So they're in our lives every day, and we don't mind because all of us want the same thing. We want them to be, um, in, like, incredibly successful. Um, so, I um, mean, yeah, I'm fortunate in, as a coach to have that relationship with our with our parents. Take our last question from Bill. Bill, if you could raise your hand. Uh, Coach Don, Bill Bender, Sporting News. I'm, last four minutes, 13 seconds of the game, they cut it to five and they don't score again. I mean, for a coach who preaches toughness and those kind of things, how satisfying is it to close a game with that defense? Um, I mean, it's incredibly satisfying that, I mean, you have a, a team full of players who probably felt the, the lead dwindle to a point where someone like Caitlin, like a five-point lead versus Iowa is nothing. Like, they don't flinch when it comes to, you know, getting, you know, to lead the, the lead into a, you know, a, a, you know, a, come on, y'all writers, help me out. <laughs> That's dwindled to the point of it's a one or two possession game. Um, when there was a timeout called, um, you could hear all of the players, all of them, just talk about how we needed to hear, have stops. And it wasn't just the players that were in the game. It was the, it was the players that were sitting on the bench. Hey, we can't give up a three. Hey, you got to show you, you know, great job. I heard Ashlyn Watkins tell um, Chloe Kitts, way to stunt. Like, way to stunt, Chloe. And Ashton could have been really upset because she didn't get the minutes that she usually gets uh, because of foul trouble. But they're they're that locked in. And when you when you have your, you know your your peers are saying things to you that that want you to be great. I mean, it's it's half the battle for us. Like we don't have to say those things, although we reiterate what they're saying. It's pretty cool when they can hold each other accountable and they can also. Um, bless each other with encouragement. Thank you very much for your time tonight, Coach, and best of luck. Well, you're already best of luck. Congratulations. Before you step away, I want to give you the um, okay. mean card. I'm sorry about that. You about your faith, but I will if you have one My minute. What? Your faith. I wanted yes. to follow up on that conversation. Yes. Do, you, do you have one minute to just yeah, go ahead. To talk about that? Can I record it? Do you want to? Yeah.